welcome to another Ask Nera to Joy video. I have a familiar face. I have Estrella here with us today. Estrella was with us in our, our first shoot with her. We were focusing on her neck and I had given her the neck cream, the neck treatment, a neck treatment to take home and really sort of work into her neck and start working on her neck to just try to improve the texture and to just sort of really help with the tone in her neck. It was a concern area for her. So we really started focusing. I can tell, and I just sort of touched her skin a little bit before we turn the camera on, but I can feel her skin feels really good and it actually feels firmer. So I'm looking forward to kind of getting in there and just working it and massaging it just to see how much different I feel her neck area to be. So we might try and go back and just have a, um, just insert a photo in here of where she was from our first shooting. And just so that you can see the difference in her neck and maybe in her jawline because I can, uh, I think I can see a difference. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I know she said she's been good. She's been putting on her, you know, working that neck. So we're going to start by cleansing her skin. I'm going to do a lot of work again on that neck area today, massaging it. And we're going to sort of really uh, just, just work with it more just to really build and strengthen and tone that neck area. So we're going to start by using the cleanser, the K-Cleanser. And we're going to cleanse off her skin here. But it does, it feels different. And it's just been... Uh, it's been a month, I think, hasn't it, mm -hmm. that we did you? Yeah, one month ago. So this is now her second treatment. And we, uh, I, even, I even feel that her skin looks brighter. I remember she had a little bit of, um, just a little bit of melasma. She was a little bit blotchy the first time. And I feel like her pore size looks really good because I think in the first video, we were also pointing out her pore size was a slightly larger pore because she has had an oily skin uh, growing up and into you know her 20s and 30s we talked about this but uh, but her pore size looks better to me and also her neck which is what's so great the neck area really looks terrific so i'm really happy with that but i can definitely feel her skin is not moving as much with my hands as other uh, as the previous video that we did, the first video we did with Australia. So I'm just using my disposable sponges, and we're going to take off the cleanser. Okay, so we remove the cleanser. We're going to do a little exfoliant on her skin now. Her skin is, is just, it's different. It's definitely different. It's firmer. I feel it's firmer and definitely brighter from before. So, uh, so that's wonderful. Just one month. So here we have the exfoliating mask and it's the famous exfoliating mask that is a papaya based mask, has a little bit of lemon peel powder, it's got chamomile in it, and of course it does have glycolic in it, which is why it stings a little bit when we put it on. I mixed it with a little bit of healing gel. Uh, we are focusing on the neck, so we want to really make sure we're going to do that neck area well. Whenever you're working with the neck, you want to make sure you push your head back, you're putting your products on your neck, and you're stretching your head back, so you're really getting in those vertical lines, the cleansing, everything. The cleansing, if you're exfoliating, when you're putting on your serums, your treatment products, everything needs to be uh, with your head all the way back so that you're really doing that neck area well. And we want to always be going in upward motions when we're working in products in, into the neck. Now I'm doing her upper lip really well too because she has a little bit of colour above her lip. So with a lot of people, because it's where they get the fine little vertical lines, you want to make sure that again, that you're working that area really well with everything, with your serums, your treatment serums, your treatment products. In this case, we are still just putting on the exfoliant, but I want to make sure we get into those little vertical lines around the mouth so that, uh, that we're really doing the best possible treatment for her while she's here. So we're working this in really well, this exfoliant. I'm 
I'm just going to stand. I want to make sure that we really get that neck area well cleaner. Her skin looks so much better than when I first saw her a month ago. It looks so much better. It's firmer. When I massage it, her pore size is better. It's a brighter skin. It just looks so much better. I'm really happy with it. I think she's about to go to sleep again. <laughs> oh no, she smiled, she's awake. <laughs> so we have cleansed Australia's skin. We have exfoliated her skin. I said her skin is much firmer. It's not moving as much with my hands. It's um, a much healthier skin today. And her skin's so much brighter. I think you can see from her previous photos just how much brighter her skin looks. It's really, really nice. Her pore size is good, but I'm really impressed. Okay, so this is a little bit of the healing gel we're putting on her skin now. I'm going to start working in the flavonoid and I'm going to use some of the retinal formula. So again, we're working in, we're going stronger. I like in my treatments to go a little bit stronger than what they can do at home themselves. We want to, you know, we want to really give the skin a good boost. When I'm seeing people once a month, I want to clean their skin really well and I want to give the skin a good boost so it really sets them off to uh, a good start for the, their home care regimen for the month. Prescribing to clients is really important. Home care is very, very important. If you want your client's skin to be better, you have to prescribe. And to be a good five-star esthetician, you also have to prescribe products. If you are not prescribing products to your client and recommending what they should be doing at home to get their skin better, they will go elsewhere to buy, to buy their products. So it's very important that you recommend what they need for their skin and make sure that their regimen, everything's working for them. Make sure their cleanser is the right cleanser for them. Make sure they're using good serums for the season that we're in because some serums are great for certain seasons, especially in the summer months. If you uh, have your client on a daily basis using a vitamin C, it aids as an extra sun protection. Uh, so the vitamin C is a really good, a good serum for the daytime in the summer months. Come other times of the month, you might be wanting to strengthen capillaries and by using something like the Q flavonoid, which is a great, uh, it feeds the skin a lot of nutrients and it really supports the capillary wall to stop leakage, which is really important because we, as we get older, our skin gets thinner. So it's really important to be constantly feeding the skin nutrients and just protecting and coating that capillary wall. And this is the Q flavonoid that I'm putting on right now. So it's, um, and then there's many other different serums, like you've got your hyaluronic acids, which are great because hyaluronic acid is so healing and it really coats the cell and stops moisture from escaping from the cells. So it's also really important to have a hyaluronic acid serum to be using that throughout the year as well. And then you've got your peptides. A lot of the peptides are great, uh, your, you know, um, trilegamy, your, uh, your different peptides that we have. There's so many different ones. And what they are and what I call the peptides are the bodybuilders of the skin. So they are really great for the skin too and also great for certain times of the year. So it's just really important to have fabulous serums that you can alternate with and work through throughout the year just to help your skin to be the best it possibly can be. So as a, uh, the esthetician, we the estheticians, we need to be recommending to our clients and advising our clients on what serums are great for them, for their skin, for that time of year. And also take into consideration if there's someone who travels a lot and flies because you want to make sure if they're flying that you're, you're giving them something for their skin that's really going to protect your skin and, and not be so dehydrated because flying really sucks the life out of your skin and it really dehydrates your skin. So you want to make sure that you've got something that's got some consistency that's going to keep their skin really hydrated and healthy. So these types of things are really important to know and understand about your client and in the, the type of lifestyle she has. 
or he has, whether they travel a lot, the, the type of weather where they live, all of these things are very important because if they're living in a very cold, windy place, you want to make sure that the products that they're using is really going to support their skin from the environment. That's very, very important. And if they're living in a really sunny, humid place, then you want products that are not going to suffocate the skin, but are going to protect the skin from the sun. And so there's all these things that you have to take into consideration, but prescribing to your client's products is very, very important. And if you're not prescribing to your clients, you're not a five-star esthetician. So you really need to be prescribing, you need to be on top of it, you need to make sure that your client can communicate with you about how they're feeling about the products. If there's anything that just doesn't feel right, you need to have that communication with your client. And when your client comes back in to see you, you can see, number one, that they've been using it. And number two, if you've given them everything, then they, they shouldn't be surface dry. You know, if you're, you're working on pore size, you should notice an improvement in their pore size. If you're working on the neck, like we are on Estrella, you wanna be able to make sure that you can really see that the neck is doing better, that the tone is doing better, the tone in the skin is doing better. And these things are important for you to, it's, it's your responsibility, it's important for you to keep up with your client and be doing the best you possibly can for them. So we've worked in some of the flavonoid into her skin. I've put a couple of coats on her skin. I've worked it in around her eye area. The great thing about the Q flavonoid is it is an extraordinary serum in supporting blood vessel walls. And a lot of the time when you see that somebody's quite dark under the eye, if you look very closely, you'll see there is that bluey vein there very close. The skin around the eye area is a much thinner skin. So it's really important that you make sure that you support that skin. It does not have sebaceous activity. There is no oil directly up close under the eye. So you want to be really nurturing and nourishing that area, not over nourishing, but you want to be nurturing it, protecting it and hydrating it is really important. So we have put the Q flavonoid around Estrella's eyes. We've also put it on her lip. Remember, we did exfoliate her lip really well, paying attention to, she doesn't have many vertical lines above her lip. She actually has a you know really good skin here, but she has slightly larger pores there. So we want to make sure that you're, you know, when you're working on some your client's face, you want to make sure that you are addressing every square inch of their face and that you're paying t attention to all of it and that you're treating all of it is really important. On the eyelids, a lot of people don't pay attention and they don't put eye cream on their eyelids and it's really important that you educate your client and tell them that they must protect, they must nourish because this area up here gets dry and when it gets dry, it looks heavy and it looks dull and then it looks like, makes you look tired. So you want to make sure that your client, when they're putting on their eye product, that they are putting it in a complete circle around their eye and they're really supporting the skin everywhere on their face is very important because that's what's going to keep them looking more youthful and, uh, and that's important. That's what we all want to be looking more youthful. So I have on Estrella, I have the Q flavonoid. I'm going to start working in a treatment product. I'm going to use a little bit of retinol on her, but a little bit later before I put her mask on. Uh, I'm going to work in, this is a hydrating mask. It's what I like to use as my massage cream. And I'm just going to work and do a really good massage on her neck. We want to constantly be focusing on that area. So we're going to work in and do a really nice massage on her. Now it's important when you're working on the neck, you want to be going all the way around behind the ear because there is nothing more unattractive than a dried up neck, part of your neck here, which if you look back at some photos that I had actually posted one on Instagram 
of my younger brother who had this horribly aged back of his neck. I couldn't believe it when I saw it when I went home to Australia. And the front of his neck looked great and his skin looks great, but the back of the neck he pays no attention to. So I can assure you after he saw the picture of his neck, he's doing a lot more work on his neck. He was horrified and uh, it's very important to pay attention to the sides and the back of your neck, especially if you're wearing your hair back and you're going to be going outside in the sun or if you have shorter hair, you really want to make sure you're putting all your treatment creams all the way around to the back. So what we're doing is a lot of massage on the neck in particular. And this is something that you can do at home. So you just do the rolling motions yourself up like this. And it's quite firm. I mean, we're doing it quite firm here. Not too strong right here on the neck, but quite firm. And for you, when you're massaging your jawline, you can use your knuckles. And you use it in a way like this. And you just roll it back up here like this. So you've got your jawline here is in between your two knuckles and you just roll it up like this. Motions going upward like this with your hands and then rolling it up like this. I find it easier when I massage my own face to lie down, put my head on a pillow than I do standing up in front of the mirror doing it. I would prefer to lie down and massage my neck. So we've just um, massaged in, in uh, some treatment product into Estrella's skin. She's very relaxed here. And we're, uh, we're just taking off the excess. I'm going to be doing a little fruit complex number one on her skin right now, which is gonna help really tighten it up even more. We're gonna take it down onto the neck area. And then I'm going to be removing that and putting on a retinal formula, a professional retinal, before we put the mask on. I'm just splitting my cotton ball, my cotton round in half, because I don't want the cotton to absorb too much of the fruit complex number one. Now the fruit complex is a complex of your alpha hydroxy acids. And it's really nice because all your alpha hydroxy acids contain different um, molecules, your different um, alpha hydroxy, your glycolic, your lactic, your malic, tartaric and citrus. They're all different weights and uh, um, they go to different levels in the skin. So they're different molecular size and weights and they go to different levels. So we really want to make sure that again, we're constant, everything that stimulates fibroblast cells is going to be a positive to the skin. It's going to help a pore size reduce and it's going to help keep the skin firm and toned. So we are doing that on her right now. It's gonna be a little bit tingly on her skin, not too uncomfortable. This is a uh, fruit complex number one, which is a 25%. The pH is a little bit lower than most, it's a 2.8, so it would be equivalent to about a 35% of a 3.0 uh, 3 pH. And we're going to take it down onto the neck because we want to make sure that we're doing that neck and we just need to pull, hold the skin down a little bit there so you can really sort of get into the, the vertical lines that sort of the folds of the neck. Now sometimes certain creams and products get caught in the fold of a neck. So you want to make sure, especially if it's an active product, you want to make sure you get it all out because otherwise you'll have these irritated lines, these red, dry, flaky areas that sort of sit where product sits within a fold. So you want to make sure again that you're, you're holding your neck back and you're really sort of getting the neck very well. And in Estrella's case, I was sort of just holding her decollete down, pushing down, so I was able to really get into those, uh, those lines around the neck area, those folds. So we're going to leave this on a few minutes and then when we take this off, I'm gonna put on a retinol before we put the mask on. 
Okay, so we're going to take off the fruit complex number one now, and I'm just using some cool cotton, um, cool sponges with it uh, slightly dampened, and we're just going to take, take the excess off there now. Okay, so we've taken off the fruit complex. I'm going to be putting on my retinol formula, which is my professional retinol. And I like to layer a lot with masks. Sometimes I'm doing a mask that could set quite tight on the face if you allowed it, but I don't like to do that generally. So uh, I like to work and play a lot with masks just to be able to get, to be able to treat as much of someone's skin as possible because sometimes you know they're everything that we put on their skin is a treatment and everything that I do and put on my clients skin I do for a reason it everything has a purpose and I'm going to make sure that I can maximize on uh, as much as I can to be able to get the best possible results for my clients skin while I have them with me so uh, right now we're putting on a retinal formula I'm just uh, going to work that in for a minute and I'm actually going to be putting it on her eyelids because her eyelids up here are quite dark in colour and I feel like she's not sort of putting too much on her eyelids compared to the rest of her face. So just underneath the, the brow bone or just on the brow bone there, I'm really just sort of working this retinal in there. And then we're going to uh, put the mask on. So we've just worked it in for a minute, the retinal formula. I'm going to just prepare her face now because I'm going to use a mask the collagen mask and it uh, it can sort of get in the hair a little bit so I like to tear a tissue and just start and prepare the face so it doesn't uh, it doesn't creep into her hair. It's one that I have to mix and um, so I don't want it moving down too much onto the face. We have the two powders uh, this one, as I said, is a collagen, collagen firming mask I'm doing today. There's um, two packets that come, that come with it. Uh, the small packet and the large packet, you mix the two together. I like to use a rubber bowl and a disposable spatula. And you mix your two powders together always first before you add your water to it. Now I've taken a dampened cotton pad and I've just torn it in half. I don't want to cover too much of her eye because as I said earlier that her above her around where her eyebrow is the skin coloring there she's not doing a lot with that area she's not nourishing it and I can tell she's not putting an eye cream on and because she's kind of asleep too right now um, she can't hear me <laughs> but I'm I put the retinal formula on her skin and I want the mask to get in there and really do its thing too so I've cut torn this in half, it's slightly dampened, just so that I can get the mask on this area, this part of her face. So the packets inside the box also comes a little um, flask like this. When I fill it up with water, I like to use distilled water, but I don't fill it all the way up. It's about a quarter of an inch, a good quarter of an inch from the top. You don't want to make it too runny because it will just run everywhere. So uh, you pour the whole thing in at one time. You don't pour a little bit in and then mix like you as if you're mixing a cake. You put the whole thing in and then you mix it. And as I said, I like to use a rubber bowl because it gives me more control. I love these kinds of masks. They, they are so amazing and they really work well and they really make a difference with the skin. I prefer this type of mask than I would even the, the drying clay masks. And I certainly prefer this type of mask to the sheet masks because I use sheet mask, masks more as a catalyst to what I have on underneath them. Just if I don't want a mask, a clay mask, base mask to dry, I will put a sheet mask over the top of it. And it could be any kind of sheet mask. But I, I find sheet masks great in that as a catalyst, but not just to put directly on the skin. As I've said before in previous videos, that a sheet mask to me, unless it's a collagen, a freezer dried collagen type of sheet mask, uh, but a lot of them are just a, a piece of gauze soaking in serum. And to me, it's, um, I mean, pretty much that's it. So it's, uh, but you know, as I said, they're wonderful as a catalyst for me to use over top of another mask. 
um, and it could, you know, you don't have to put the other mask on really heavy, so it's still getting some of the, the benefits of the sheet mask, but really it's, uh, I just sort of um, am not as big a fan as a lot of people are with the sheet masks out there. I do really love collagen masks. Uh, this is a collagen mask, but I also really love the freezer dried collagen. And whether it be a vegan collagen or animal, it is, um, it's, I really like them on the skin. So we're just putting this on now. We want to make sure we put it all the way above the lip. And I'm going to stand here shortly so I can make sure that I'm getting it down onto the neck. I want to, I want to go down a little bit further on the neck area. Now this type of mask is um, a lot more comfortable than some of those really heavy masks that set really, really tight, which you have to make sure for those clients that, um, you know, a lot of them, they feel very, very claustrophobic with those masks on. This one here is not as uncomfortable because it is more rubbery. It doesn't set super duper tight. It, um, it dries, but not in a really, really hard mask. It, uh, it just sets and it's, it's more rubbery. So it's very comfortable and not as heavy on the client's face. So we've taken that down onto her neck area, which is really important. And then what I like to do after that, it's nice if you can just grab a tissue and while your bowl, uh, while it's still a little bit wet in there, you can just take the tissue and wipe the excess of it out. So it's just gonna be easier for you to clean if you do it that way. And that way also the sink doesn't get clogged up because if you're constantly washing bowls and towels and things that have creams and heavy masks on, it's very easy to clog up your sink. So uh, you can, you know, sort of really just discard it in the trash and then you've just got to rinse it and, and wash it well and put it in your steriliser after that. So now we've got this on, I'm going to lay a, uh, a little bit of gauze over top of it because I want to press down on her, the, her skin and just mould it to her skin. These are four by fours. And I like gauze because you can stretch it. So I just open it up completely. And as I said, now, now I'm gonna put this on a forehead, but I like to sort of stretch a little bit so I can go right down over her nose area too. Cover the nose. And then stretch this one here too, so that we can go down onto that neck area. And because I've taken it all the way down onto her neck, I'm going to get one more piece of gauze. I'm going to put this one all the way down onto the neck. So now I can mold it to her skin. Just press down. And while this is on drying, it's a nice time to do a hand and arm massage, or you can focus more on their decollete and do a nice mask on their decollete, or do, if you have the rollers, the heated rollers, you can sort of work around the back of the neck and or you could do a nice foot and lower leg massage that's also really nice to do so we're going to uh, leave this on for about eight more minutes and we'll be back to take it off so we're back we are going to take off the mask off Estrella's skin she's got the collagen mask on and we're going to take it off in one sheet right now it's been on her skin about eight minutes and uh, and that's really nice and remember we had the retinal formula underneath it so we're just going to peel it off here now and take it off. Here we go. Now usually you get a little, a little bit of the mask in the areas around the eyebrows and on the sides of the hair. So she just has a little bit down on her neck. Her skin feels amazing. It looks amazing. And we, um, we've sort of really sort of helped to hydrate those lids. I, when I gave her her home care last time, I did not give her an eye product. So today I'm definitely giving her an eye gel she can start using around her eyes. She's not really dehydrated around her eyes, but she has a little bit of color, but I'm sort of more concerned about these lids and just here underneath her brow. So we really want to sort of want to really hydrate those areas. So I'm just going to remove, she has a little bit of mask here around the, the chin. 
Now I'm going to put a little bit more of the formula, the retinal formula on her skin and a moisturiser and she's going to be going home. It's quite late at night over here, so she will, uh, she'll be able to leave it on her skin and go to sleep and it'll be really nice for her. So we're just getting, I'm putting on the end cream and which is a night cream. It has gamalinic acid in it, which is a really, really nice moisturizer. It's very good for sensitive skin and it, uh, gamalinic acid comes from evening primrose oil. So it's a really nice one. And she's had a lot of work done on her neck tonight. So she is all, all done. Her skin is great. We're gonna put a little bit more eye product around her eyes and then she's all finished. Just a light little coat of the eye gel around her eyes. And Estrella's all done. So uh, she's had another treatment. This was her second treatment today. She's working, um, working on her neck. She has uh, the neck kit at home where she's doing the two products at home for her neck. Her skin looks great. Her skin looks nice and firm. It's a lot brighter. Her pore size is much better and she's doing a great job. So, um, so thanks for watching. That was uh, Estrella's second treatment here. And as I said, we are getting improvement on her neck. You'll be able to see from the before and after photos that we're going to insert in here. So you can see the, the difference from facial number one to facial number two. And we'll be back uh, maybe to see her again in a month. So thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.